Hey guys, this is Trump Nona Clarity. Today I want to talk about a video or create a video talking about um, social media use and how it affects your individuality and your life balance and how we can hopefully try to find a way to balance our social media use and our everyday life. And while I talk about that today in the background, we're going to be making steak, mashed potatoes, and garlic bread. So, hope you enjoy. Hey guys, so like I talked about earlier, I want to talk about social media and retaining your individuality and having more balance in your life as opposed to doom scrolling basically. And as someone who has done a lot of doom scrolling, I know firsthand how annoying it is when you stop finally and realize like, oh, I had to do this, 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 and this, and now suddenly it's like two hours later and I need to go to bed, and how addicting it is to be on like Instagram or TikTok or just YouTube as well, just the internet in general, and how addicting it is to just fall into the algorithm and get stuck there basically. So with how addicting it is to be on social media and, and have these algorithms designed to keep us hooked on there for hours and hours on. And I can't ignore that whether you're young or old, that there is a huge lack of balance when it comes to being on social media and having that time that you need because of course we we all want entertainment entertainment is something that we all just like but it can be dangerous just like how people were caught up for being cops potatoes in the past watching tv all day it's the same thing if not worse when it comes to social media because now you have pretty much tv everywhere and access to any topic imaginable which is technically awesome like social media and technology in general is technically a really good thing i don't want to make it all doom and gloom and pretend that it's not like social media for example i'm just gonna start off on like the good stuff like we can call and text anybody from anywhere see facetime or video chat with the relatives that we haven't seen in a long time at any time we don't need to rely on freaking carrier carrier pigeons or horse carriages to visit people we could literally do it off the internet this this internet fucking online therapy that's wild to me, but it it works for people. That's fucking awesome. <laughs> and there's so many benefits. We could make money off the internet. We can make millions of dollars. You see a lot of these social media influencers and just people in general, cryptocurrency. You can make so much money just by being internet savvy. Like that's wild. <laughs> and you don't even need necessarily a degree for that. You just simply just start up a YouTube channel and make money. That's not to go on my channel. But it's nevertheless, it's awesome. The options and possibilities we can learn recipes, just learn skills like the steak that I'm making in the background. I use a double sear method that I learned from a YouTube video. And since then, it's been a better steak that I've had compared to like Texas Roadhouse or Longhorn or hell, there's a expensive steak that I've had that was like worth $64. As if it tastes better than that. That's wild to me. I learned that from the internet. So, while the internet and social media is awesome, we could do and learn and experience so much cool shit. We cannot ignore how detrimental it is and how potentially dangerous it is to over-frequently use and rely on the internet for our daily entertainment when it comes to how should I say this when it comes to like for example when are you getting those quick dopamine hits while you're scrolling through Instagram and sure you're getting a bunch of memes at once a lot of <laughs> a lot of nothing content and i'm no stranger to it i still do it to this day i'll scroll and see something that's just silly doesn't make sense but it's silly just you know laugh at it and i'll keep scrolling but with how algorithms are designed to only show you things that you like for the most part 
and then sometimes get you into um whether it be darker subjects or just more things that you will guarantee laugh at. And we keep seeing stuff we like. It's it's like having a buffet of all of your your favorite food. It's like you're not gonna just stop eating it. It's your favorite food. <laughs> you're gonna eat till you're full. And unfortunately, being full a lot of times means two hours later. It's like oh, um, that's my ass hurt. I'm still in the toilet. <laughs> and we've had like a bunch of things to do. So the internet is can be wow a really amazing source of news, entertainment, skills, learning, and just overall a benefit to our lives. It can also be a huge, huge detriment. And we have to realize and recognize how to balance our time on social media and internet and our real life as well. Because while it may seem obvious, like, I'll just put the phone down and live life, it's not as easy as people would think like it's way easier said than done trust me as somebody who's doom scrolled and thought in the back of my head huh i should be doing something right now keep scrolling <laughs> like it, it's so easy to mentally get trapped and when something's mentally a problem it's not as easy as just simply just stopping at least for most people some people can go to cold turkey and just solve the issue outright which honestly good on you that is amazing and impressive I am not at that level. <laughs> I am definitely not. And in this video, like, of course, I'll admit, actually, hell, in every video that I talk about, I deal with the topic that I talk about. And most of the time when I'm in the video talking about the topic, I'm either A, healed from it, B, healing from it, or C, recognizing that's a problem and working on ways to heal from it. Because I'm no perfect individual. Like, just because I'm talking about it doesn't mean I have giga brain level knowledge of how to solve the problem. And this video is not going to be a outright solution. None of these videos are. And that's the reality of it that I want to kind of make this disclaimer for. None of these videos are meant to be outright solutions to your problem. Because everybody's different. Everybody solves their problems their own way. However... I want these videos to highlight that the problems that I have dealt with, if people can relate to them, then it can open their eyes and at least have them be open minded to the point where it's like, you know, hey, this actually is an issue that I'm dealing with. And if I if he recognizes the issue and I recognize the issue now. Now I can think of a way to either solve it or start thinking about ways to at least, you know, seek help or advice or somebody who's qualified to provide a solution for me. Because I'm no psychiatrist. I'm just kind of presenting a topic to get people's minds open to thinking like, hey, this actually has caused me issues in my life and I should recognize this issue and think about ways to solve that problem or start working on steps to get over it but that's my little disclaimer back to the topic at hand but getting back to the topic at hand we're going to talk about social media in terms of life balance and so to what i understand when it comes to social media at the end of the day i'm going to say this at the end of the day it does not matter and I recently saw a video on this where somebody was talking about a Twitter death spiral. I'm going to link that in the description. It's a YouTube short um, that talks about how people will go on Twitter and talk about a negative topic and be all doom and gloom about it. And a lot of people will get up in their feelings about some random topic on, ter on tw Twitter. Twitter <laughs> that when people step outside of Twitter or step outside of that social media bubble they're in and go actually live life and whether it be hang out with friends or learning a skill or doing something else entirely, 
when you are outside of that bubble, you start realizing that social media does not matter. It's very addicting. Don't get me wrong. And not even just Twitter, like Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, any media that you use to just look at things, look at different topics. There's an algorithm in all of those designed to keep us hooked, keep us watching. And when you think about it, in just like a regular approach, of course we want to see things that we're interested in. So technically, that's not exactly a bad thing. We don't want to waste our time on things we don't want to see. But if the things we want to see are always negative, then we start falling into a negative death spiral. Or, or just a negative spiral in general. And even if it's just positive things or just simple cute things, we are so prone to get distracted. A lot of people are. And it's a lot worse, especially with how younger and younger people are getting introduced to the internet. And they talk about iPad kids. <laughs> how easy it is, I can't imagine. With my ADHD ass, if I got a phone or a, a tablet when I was freaking like five or eight, I would be hooked on that even more so than I am now. But with how addicting it is to be on the internet and to get influenced by a lot of stuff, it becomes harder to snap back to reality and find any satisfaction in just simply living life. We get dissatisfied with the way we're living because you see... A lot of either funny shit on the internet or people living better lives than us and people that are like influencers that have this wealth and this lavish lifestyle. And we're like, we want that. We want to just kind of escape reality and just look at stuff on social media and be inspired by the wrong things. And there's a billion different subjects I could talk about with social media. I'm not going to get into all of them because that, that's just going to be too much. No, mm -mm. that would be an hour long video. And I don't have hours long worth of footage that for cooking and nor do I want to make an hour long video. I do not want to do it. But basically, long story short, we spend too much time getting distracted looking at stuff on social media. We know damn well we have priorities outside of life. And we need to find a way to balance that when it comes to having time on social media for entertainment or just looking at stuff and realizing that we need to live life and get priorities done or go somewhere to go to get things done. And things outside of social media can be really boring. Like, when you think about it, the internet's always either fun or interesting. What we look at on Instagram is either always either fun or interesting or we're going to find something fun or interesting. In real life, like, we pay taxes. <laughs> we have to go to work. We have to deal with a lot of bullshit in life. And obviously, that's not fun. But unfortunately, it's not going to be fun if that's your reality and it's what you kind of make it. If that, if that, in that sense and when we start thinking about like oh um, life sucks right now let me just go on the internet then it's so much easier to fall into a negative spiral or just instant dopamine instant gravitation whereas in life we just start falling further and further behind and the way I started getting over this issue because I used to just get up and put my phone out there an hour scrolling and feel like nothing. I'm like, oh, now I got to go do regular things. Is to realize there's more to life. And it's not easy to just simply just do. But the way I saw it, it's like, you know, I would be scrolling for like maybe five or ten minutes. And realize, okay, I need to get this, this, and this done. And start... Like, for example, like cooking. I really enjoy cooking. As you can probably see in the background, I enjoy cooking. And finding things outside of the internet to enjoy is something that I feel like everybody should prioritize. Is it, is it going to be a solution for everybody? I don't know. Probably not. 
you know, can't speak for you. But at the same time, you have to live life off the internet in order to find balance in your life. I was originally going to talk about a bunch of different internet topics, and I'm just like, no, that's easily just going to to um, get into too many rabbit holes. So I'm just going to just go into the nitty gritty and just be like, look, if you're doom scrolling, <laughs> you know damn well you got shit to do. And it's a very toxic process. And the stuff we see in social media, like if, if we like stuff we see in social media, as far as like, you know, like people, like everything's all like, you know, sunshine and rainbows, or we look at toxic stuff all day. Why not make our lives in general outside of it better? You know, if we're sick of our situation and we escape the social media to um, to escape reality and look at something that we find more interesting, why not make our own lives interesting? We have to start living less on the internet and living life as a whole while not completely getting rid of what we enjoy in life. And it's like any addiction. Whereas if we can use something in a controlled manner, not for everything. And I'm not <laughs> I'm not I'm not sure how every single like you know a drug or thing we abuse or get it to works. But at the same time, if we can like for example, I talked about let's start this shit off talking about masturbation and porn addiction. Some people can watch it and not do it every single day or have it be a terrible habit. Good on them. I couldn't. <laughs> and it freaking affected my life negatively. And so I had to reduce it, like reduce it heavily to the point where I can actually start thinking clearly. That's why it's called no nut clarity because I don't need to watch it and have that, you know, dopamine boost from doing that just to start thinking clearly again. And I think the same way of using social media and internet in that regard. And another thing I want to mention with this is involving individuality and how social media kind of takes that away from people in a sense, at least from what I've observed of how a lot of people who follow these trends and challenges, it feels like a lot of people are in like a hive mind where everybody kind of thinks the same thing. You talk to a few people who are interested, whether it be in, in like influencers or challenges or in topics such as like people being defamed. A lot of people will go with the flow and what everybody else agrees on social media instead of having their own opinion of it. And that seems more and more common Nowadays, like, hell, don't be starting on Zodiacs. Nothing's wrong with Zodiacs, but if the internet says that, uh, <laughs> the internet says that a certain Zodiac is toxic to date, then it's like, oh, we're not going to date Capricorns anymore. Uh, the internet said they're toxic, so fuck that. And it's like, dang. So because the month that the my parents decide to fucking and have me born is considered toxic. I'm not a viable partner. That's wild to me. <laughs> and that's literally one example I use of like how social media can influence people so negative to the point where instead of having your own opinion about a person, um like your own opinion about somebody being a viable partner, you let the entire crowd of people who don't like Capricorns inspire you to be like, well, this guy's cool. He's nice to me. He treats me right. He's Capricorn. I'm not gonna date him. <laughs> that's, that's so wild to me. And it's like that for just a lot of different topics in general where people will fall into this. People will just start going with the flow of these group. And it happens in real life too. Don't get me wrong. But the fact that it can happen just by going through social media that we use so frequently is just wild to me how people do these challenges just to do them just for views and clout and like the was it, a skull crusher challenge 
course, cinnamon challenge and the freaking Tide Pod challenge. Those were ridiculous. And people will hurt themselves for views and for money. And a lot of these people do the same exact thing. They're no longer individuals. They're just people just doing the same exact thing for views. And it's wild how the... When I think about social media, a lot of times I see a lot of the same people doing the same thing. And... Sometimes it's hard to kind of come to that realization where um, people have lost that life balance and their individuality due to how these algorithms, whether they get us addicted for a hook or give us toxic stuff that we do and follow the trends and flow. And there's technically nothing wrong with being able to, like, you know, be a part of a group online, having people who share like minded ideas. But it's gotten ridiculous. And again, I could be all day on these topics, but I'll just say this. When you have. Because we, we we all are aware, like everybody so, so, so uses social media is aware of how toxic it can be, how addictive it can be. But nobody really thinks about how to balance their own life outside of it and just use it to escape reality, no matter how toxic it is. And in this video, it feels like more of a long rant. And you know what? That's okay. Like, I'm no professional doctor trying to find a solution. Again, I'm making this to have people think about what they see and experience on social media, how long they use it, and if they notice that they're falling into these trends, basically, like, you know, doing a lot of self-reflection on, like, your social media use, your time spent there, whether it be you or a friend, and thinking about how it's affecting them positively or negatively. Because, again, there's multiple aspects. It's not just all doom and gloom. There are positive aspects. Think about how it affects you, how it affects your time, and are you where you want to be in life? And if... If you're not where you want to be, think about not just social media, but what's affecting you. If it doesn't be social media, what can you do to recognize that your social media use is becoming an issue? Your internet use is becoming an issue. As somebody who has had a computer for the longest time and has, has only... My mom caught me freaking video game addicted when I was a kid. And that was, <laughs> that was not fun, but... I used to always just be super introverted, play video games, and just escape reality all the time and not live life. And now, because I haven't lived life, I'm super socially awkward. Shit, in this is video alone, you probably hear me talking about different stuff. I'm ADHD ass, still can't focus on a thing to talk about. But a lot of people are like that. And more and more people, especially younger, are like that. They're doing less time socializing and more time on social media. It's not a bad thing, but we need to find a way to balance it, honestly. Whether it be going cold turkey and completely like getting off, deleting all your social media, but still, of course, using your phone to call and text, obviously, you're going to need that. Or taking baby steps and starting to like, you know, set time limits. Something needs to be done if you are consciously dealing with the issue of like doom scrolling or having social media affect your life negatively. And I feel like people who use it know damn well that it's a detriment to their life or at least can recognize the detriment when they take, they self-reflect, take a step back and look at where their life is right now and just look at how much time they spend on different things and realize like, oh, I spend too much time doing this. But with that being said, that's all I want to talk about. I kind of just want to get off my chest for that. I do hope it helped at least somebody recognize that there is an issue with using just like using anything too much using social media too much is definitely an issue like i'm only talking about it because it has been an issue for me getting distracted and scrolling for too long getting stuck on topics i don't need to be on and going with the flow of these trends and these groups that i have no business <laughs> agreeing with but I'm just kind of just going with the flow and I've started to mitigate that and started to 
be able to use my time a bit more efficiently and effectively and start living life outside of social media, but still being able to use it. I'm not perfect. Don't get me wrong. I still, I still have moments where I doom scroll. I'm not hundred percent healed, but being able to at least start recognizing where the problems are is definitely a good way to be able to start working on a process to get your life back on track. If it is affecting your life that heavily, some people it's just fine. And if it's fine for you, good on you. But I'm not going to ignore that it is a problem for a lot of people. But with that being said, thank you so much for watching this video. This has been Trip from No Net Clarity. I hope you enjoyed the video both visually and auditorily. Again, if that's a word, I don't know. I should probably look it up. But that steak was freaking delicious. And I'm going to leave the recipe in the, script, or the, recipe in the description. It's been Trip from No Net Clarity. Y'all have a good one and peace.